Round two of the IMSA season brings us to the roughest track on the calendar, Sebring. 2023 will see the 71st running of the 12 Hours of Sebring and feature a large 54 car grid. Now the 12 Hours of Sebring is the second race on the IMSA calendar and also the second longest race of the season. Taking place at Sebring International Raceway in Florida, it's also known as the birthplace of American endurance racing. And in fact, it is North America's oldest permanent road racing facility, having been established in 1950. Now, the 3.74 mile racing circuit is on what was originally Hendricks Field, a United States Army Air Forces base. And during World War II, this actually served as heavy bomber training school for B-17 Flying Fortress and B-24 Liberator pilots. Now nestled into the orange groves and cattle ranches of Central Florida, Sebring International Raceway has hosted the iconic 12-hour endurance race since 1952 and it is now part, of course, of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Sebring was actually the site of the first FIA World Championship sports car race back in 1953. And in 2012, it also hosted the first race for the FIA World Endurance Championship. Notably, the World Endurance Championship runs their season opening 1,000 miles of Sebring the day before IMSA runs the 12 hours of Sebring. This weekend is referred to as Super Sebring. Now, the track surface is arguably the most famous aspect of this track. In fact, the front stretch is still the same concrete that was poured back in 1941 for the Air Force Base. And there are also other portions of the track that still utilize some of this original concrete as well. Add in some other portions of the track that are actually paved with asphalt, and you have quite a challenging course to begin with. However, these various different surfaces have become very rough and bumpy over the years, which gives Sebring its reputation as one of the roughest tracks in the world, and really a true test of both man and and machine. Now, the track has seen some various small configuration changes over the years, but many of these have been to increase safety, and the most recent changes were done back in 1997. The 2023 edition marks the 71st running of this iconic race, and we'll see 54 cars take to the track. They're going to be spread across five classes, featuring eight GTPs, eight LMP2s, 10 LMP3s, 8 GTD Pros, and 20 GTDs. 351 laps were turned by the victorious 02 Cadillac Chick Ganassi Racing Cadillac last year, driven by Earl Bamber, Alex Lynn, and Neil Johnny. The other 2022 class winners included, in LMP2, the number 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry, the number 33 Sean Creech Motorsport entry took the honors in LMP3, in GTD Pro, it was the number 3 Corvette entry, Entry that took victory, and in GTD it was the number 47 Centler Racing Ferrari. Sebring is a fairly quick track with lap times for the new GTP cars ranging from about the mid to high 140s up into about the two minute range for GTDs. And there are some very good passing opportunities into turn three, turn seven, and turn 10. As well, you can't forget about a great passing opportunity down the very long Omen Straight that leads into the infamous and very bumpy turn 17 which is also referred to as sunset in a race this long at a track this rough staying on track is critical to finding victory lane and definitely expect those iconic sebring bumps to lead to some equipment failures as a matter of fact the track is listed as a flat surface but the track still produces up to 18 feet of vertical wheel travel over the course of the lap and that's just from those iconic Sebring bumps. Now, in addition to the bumps, another challenging aspect of Sebring is the darkness. Unlike the stadium lighting that we saw at the Rolex 24, Sebring is much more like Le Mans when it comes to lighting. Luckily for drivers though, they're gonna be on the good side of daylight savings time, and they'll get an extra hour to navigate the course during the daytime hours. And speaking of those drivers, unlike at the Rolex 24 where we would see teams of usually four drivers competing, Sebring usually only sees teams of three drivers competing, and we'll probably see them rotate out around every one to three hours. Or whenever the team determines that their stint time is over, they'll make that driver change on their next pit stop. Now, the 12 Hours of Sebring is the second race on the calendar and also the second race in the Michelin Endurance Cup. You can learn all about the season opening Rolex 24 
right here. A big thank you to all of the Patreon supporters. If you too want to support the show, you can head to patreon.com slash off in the asses. Once again, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend and doesn't go off in the asses.